Hello, my name is Tristan, and today I wanna to talk about FOMO, and specifically why I think it's kinda of dumb. Okay, so first, what is FOMO? FOMO is the fear of missing out. When I think of FOMO, the stereotypical thing I imagine is myself inside studying while my friends are out at a party or hanging out together and I'm not able to be there with them. Honestly, what you think of when you think of FOMO probably says a lot about you. So let me know what you think of when you think of FOMO because I'd be really interested in finding out. Technically speaking, in the academic literature, FOMO refers to witnessing an event online, normally on social media, and having a compulsive worry or fear that you're missing out on that event. And then after witnessing the event, you'll try to compensate in some way, which normally just means that you're trying to foster some other form of connection. I'm not gonna talk about FOMO in regards to social media specifically, because I think that A, you can feel that without social media, and B, I'm an influencer now, and I wanna protect that. But seriously, I don't think you need social media in order to feel FOMO. In fact, some of the times I feel the strongest are when I'm talking to people in person and they're telling me about some event that happened in the past, regardless of whether I saw it was happening on social media or not. What I wanna talk about today is how that's inevitable, how life is missing out, and so FOMO will always exist. I, my close friends, and probably you watching this, sort of hold on to this feeling that you can probably do everything, or at least everything you care about, which is kind of an overwhelming feeling. Okay, so first I'm gonna go through some of the places where I feel FOMO the most. There are three main places where I wanna talk about how life is missing out. The first is with travel. This one's pretty obvious. This is essentially when people are visiting cool places and you feel like you're missing out on something by not joining them or because you haven't been there before. The second is academically, which is when I feel like I'm missing out on something because I'm not smart enough to access it. And the third is probably what you imagine when you think of FOMO, which is not going to parties either because you don't want to or because you weren't invited. One of these is a lot more common for me and I'm not gonna tell you which one. Okay, so side note, before I dive into travel, academics, and partying, I wanna make it clear that I'm not talking about my close friends. I'm talking about people who are generally in my circle. I'm gonna dive into this more a little bit later. Okay, so the first place I feel FOMO is travel. I think this one's pretty obvious. So with travel, it always feels like there's someone going to some cool new place that I've never been, and they're doing it with a bunch of their friends which obviously doesn't make me feel great because that's not something I frequently do. I definitely do feel jealous of this and I'm honestly not exactly sure what I want to do about it. There used to be this whole blue ass water thing, which was essentially just influencers traveling to really cool and aesthetic places like Bali or Hawaii. I'm not talking about that partially because it's died down and partially because that never really made me feel horrible. It always just made me feel like, okay, these people have rich parents. Like, what am I gonna do about that? What always really sucked was the people who I was close enough to that I could talk to, but not close enough that they would actually take me on the trip. It was this specific window that would make me feel very jealous and frankly still does. And I'm honestly not sure what to do about it. The second is in regard to academics. I started to feel this in high school. I was taking a math class and I dropped out of it because it was hard. And a few of my close friends started calling me dropout, which was funny, but there was context in which it obviously was not funny, specifically when the people who were calling me that weren't my close friends. This feeling persisted into college when I felt like there was a bunch of different academic paths one could take and I had to choose which one I wanted to do which frankly sucked. Something I still think about, which candidly annoys me, is how much smarter some of my friends were freshman year than I probably was senior year, which isn't healthy and probably not a great way to think about college. But when I think about FOMO academically, this thought specifically does come up. Generally speaking, I do feel a lot less outward jealousy and FOMO about academics probably because I'm not a nerd. Generally though, I do feel a lot less jealousy about academics, mainly because I sort of feel like everyone's had to put in their time at some point. And so if someone's ahead of me academically now, they probably just studied more in the past. This isn't entirely true, but it's enough to let me fall asleep at night. My feelings of FOMO when people are traveling is a lot sharper. Speaking of sharp FOMO feelings, I think the staple one is partying. I have this idea that partying is what pure fun looks like, which is stupid because I don't enjoy partying all that often anyways, which isn't to say that a party doesn't appeal to me, it's just that the idea of going out and dancing with friends seems really fun, but the idea of drinking to get blasted and then going from bar to bar or club to club doesn't really appeal to me. I think what this gets into is the idea that you want the things that make other people happy to make you just as happy as it makes them so that when you do the things with them, you don't feel bad about it. But unfortunately, that's just not the way life works. I also noticed that an easy way for me to like gauge how well I like someone is to imagine them or notice them telling me about either an academic success, a trip they went on, or a party they went to, and seeing if I feel jealous. 
I find that with my close friends, people who I truly feel care about me and who I feel like I care about, I really don't care if they're happy on their own. In fact, it really makes me feel great, even if I wasn't there or wasn't invited or anything like that. But with people who I kind of sort of like, I do start to feel a little blah whenever they start to tell me about something that could be interpreted as a flex and not just their personal joy. With people I really like, they could tell me honestly anything that makes them feel happy and I will generally feel like this pure unbridled warmth, like a glowing inside at their joy. But if it's someone who I don't really like telling me about some cool trip they went on or some cool party they went to, I'll both feel a little jealous that I didn't get to go to that cool thing and that they did. It's worth noting that there are times when FOMO is real and you probably should do something about it. For example, if your friends are all hanging out and you are bad at time management and so you can't join them, like if you say yes to too many plans or we're procrastinating on work and then suddenly can't do something with your friends, like yeah, you're gonna feel FOMO and yeah, that's a very valid feeling. It does suck to not be able to do things. Well, I do think it's a misconception that you can do it all. I do also think that there are things that you probably want to do more than anything else, and you should definitely try to prioritize those things. Generally speaking, I think this comes back to being able to say no. Because you don't have time in life to do every single thing you want, you have to learn to say no to things even that you want to do so that you can make time for the things that you actually love and really truly couldn't live without. You'll always be choosing between different things you like and you'll never be able to do every single thing you like. You could view your existence as the opportunity to live one life that you really like at the expense of a bunch of other lives that you also really would have liked. Life is inherently missing out on a bunch of different things, which is sort of why I feel like FOMO is stupid. You will miss out on so many different things that you really did want to do. So choosing what you miss out on instead of ignoring that choice and letting life drag you through it seems like a better way to actually live. We sacrifice all of those things. We miss out on all of those things for the things that we actually do. I think FOMO comes from the idea that we could have done all of these other things. Like I could have been a physics major and also been pre-med. That's just not true. I could have gone to that party and I could have stayed in and played board games. Also not true. I could have gone to visit my family or I could have gone on a trip with my friends. You never can have both. If you could have both, what's it all for? I think the fact that you have to choose, the fact that you can't do everything, even the things that you actually love, is what makes it worth it. That's what makes it special. We can choose what we want to do, so we should choose what we want to do. And instead of overthinking every small decision while worrying about all of the things we're gonna miss out on, we should throw ourselves into the choices we do make and love it because we would miss out anyways. That's a guarantee. I'm sure this will hit harder when I have real life decisions to make and I'm not just some unemployed college grad traveling around, but it is something that's interesting to think about and part of the reason why I feel like FOMO is kind of BS. Let me know what you think. Do you have to decide between all of these big things or can you actually do it all? What does FOMO mean to you? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching.